to the Counterpoint podcast. I am your host, Jan Striak, and today we are talking about connectivity, or to be more specific, the lack of it. The COVID-19 pandemic highlighted the importance of connectivity in our everyday lives, especially how it helped many of us maintain a semblance of normality during very difficult times. However, Ubiquitous connectivity is often taken for granted across the developed world, and we sometimes forget about the huge number of people who remain unconnected. So today we're going to discuss if there is a two-tiered society based on whether or not people are fortunate enough to be part of the connected world. We would also like to announce a new series where we dive deeper into the impacts of digital exclusion among students, women, underserved communities and refugees. So joining me today is Mia Thompson, Chief Commercial Officer at Unconnected.org, and Neil Shah, Research Director, Partner and Co-Founder at Counterpoint Research. So if I could turn to you first, Mia, could you please tell us about The Unconnected? Thank you, Jan, and absolutely I can. Unconnected.org is a charity that's been running for a few years now. Our goal is to bridge the digital divide, work towards digital equity, and connect 100 million people to the internet. And like you mentioned, Jan, we're working with four themes, connecting women, connecting students, connecting refugees, and connecting underserved communities. And we are running projects under each of these themes on a global scale. All the projects that we run and manage, they are focused on bringing more people into the digital world. It could be providing hardware access, expanding coverage into new places, or support with digital literacy training. And what keeps us going every day is just that, the first-hand view on how connectivity can change people's lives for the better. Great, thank you. So let's go back to the the first question then. So would your stance be that there is a two-tiered society and economy developing? Well, short answer, yes. In today's world, people need to be digital literate to fully be able to participate in this digital life. They need to know that to be able to be safe online and to be able to develop critical and analytical skills. So you need to have access to the Internet. A short answer, but yes. Right. OK, so that's yeah, that's interesting. So let's try and put some numbers on it then. Can we quantify the problem? Absolutely. So currently we're looking at an estimated 37% of the world's population, or put it in numbers, 2.9 billion people that have never used the internet today. Majority of these people are women. We know that women are 8% less likely to own a mobile phone than men and 20% less likely to own a smartphone. And I would say that even among these 4.9 billion people counted as internet users, I'm doing little rabbit ears with my fingers, you can't see that, but many hundreds of millions may only get the chance to go online very infrequently via you know, shared devices or using connectivity speeds that really limits the usefulness of their connection. And whilst we're talking about numbers, Let's say that we extend the internet access in Africa, Latin America and Asia to levels that we see in the developed countries, that would deliver numerous benefits. But let me just highlight three. So one, the resulting economic activity could generate 2.2 trillion in additional GDP. That's a 72% increase in the GDP growth rate. We also know that the evidence on the link between health literacy and mortality rates suggest that internet access could save two and a half million people and 250,000 children. And also two and a half million HIV AIDS patients could increase their life expectancy thanks to better monitoring and adherence to treatment. But these are just few of the positive impacts of connectivity. If you reverse these, you get a real view of what life is like today without the internet access. But let's keep this podcast somewhat positive, should we, Jan? Yeah, good idea. I agree. And yeah, those numbers really do help put the problem in perspective, don't they? So I guess beyond the fact that it's, of course, the right thing to do, why should companies be focusing on this area? Why should they help? Right. Okay. Well, apart from it's the right thing to do, there are longer term commercial implications. So telcos, banks, digital service providers and others, they should look at this, you know, as a huge market. There are 4 billion people in this target segment that could use your services. 
And from an internal corporate culture perspective, CSR is becoming so much more important. Employees want to be involved. Customers, they want to see what other companies are doing to create a better world. And now we've also seen investors are starting to take a really keen interest in this. And again, to state some numbers, Jan, because I know you like numbers, 50% of 23 to 30-year-olds say that they would quit a job for another one with better ESG impact. And they're also willing to sacrifice $14,000 to work in a company focused on social outcomes. That is how aware the workforces are today. That's really impressive. Thanks, Mia. And this seems a good time to bring Neil into the conversation. So Neil, any thoughts from you on this? Yeah, I completely agree with Mia and the way she has put everything in context with the facts, what we are hearing right now is this is a major obstacle for everyone to be digitally literate and connectivity is the glue which drives this and who would be in a better position than the companies and the professionals who are helping sell this connectivity to the mainstream users as well as masses to get involved and accelerate this initiative to bridge the digital divide, right? So if you look at the entire mobile industry or even the telecom industry, it's a trillion dollar industry. And even if you say a small percentage of the individuals or corporations start contributing and focusing on the unconnected more, maybe it's part of CSR activity or maybe it's part of their overall mandate, which is to connect people, but also focusing more on providing charter programs, subsidies, getting involved with feet on the ground. I think there can be a significant impact uh, which we can do as an industry. Okay, thank, thanks a lot, Neil. So companies from our sector, basically the tech sector, how, how can they help in this regard? Mia, I know this is a a big open-ended question, but from where you sit, kind of what are some of the areas, say a mobile operator or a device manufacturer or perhaps an app developer, where can they make a direct impact? Oh, that is such a, a great question. Maybe I can answer that by just explaining some of the projects that we've recently done and give you an idea about how we can work to bridge the digital divide. Even though we're a smaller organization, we're very hands-on. Uh, So I mentioned four themes in the start, connecting women, students, underserved communities and refugees. And in the connecting women category, something that we did together with an operator in Mexico and another NGO is that we set up digital training centers and computer labs in rural villages in Mexico. And we trained the, the female entrepreneurs who normally made artisanal goods and sold to tourists, but due to COVID, they couldn't. So they actually started trading these online and that changed the whole village in the way that they could operate. So that's one of the projects we did. We also worked with very closely with operators during the, or we still are due to the Ukraine war. And we supporting, we we actually physically stood at the border areas of Ukraine, giving out SIM cards and make sure that people could charge their phones as they crossed the borders into Europe. And that was just such an eye-opening experience that people were running past the food stalls and the stores with clothing and, and heat to get to us to be able to charge up their phones and call their loved ones back in Ukraine. And I can keep going on and on about various projects, but that's just some ideas of the work that we can do together, all the stakeholders in the industry to make a true difference. Wow, some really fantastic initiatives there. Thanks a lot for sharing some of those with us. So back to the numbers, as we said, I like my numbers. So let's see if we can quantify this. So when when companies get involved, how do you measure the actual impact that these initiatives have? Is that possible? Yes, it is. You can measure them in different ways. But I think to be able to really push this out, we need to understand the impact of these investments on the community. And it's also really important for companies, as they are accountable too, with results being reported to SDG slash ESG reporting. So what we do is that we quantify and we measure everything. We partner with really clever impact consultancy companies, which provides us with SDG scoring for each project. 
So we can basically show our partners, black and white, the actual impact of the projects that they support. So one of the projects we did recently was to connect female students in slum areas in India and we connected these educational facilities and even though let's say in one of these facilities they were only again I'm using rabbit ear fingers 100 girls in one of these facilities the impact of connecting those girls and provide them with the tools and the information and understanding and education to use these digital services that goes so far behind these 100 girls it goes amongst their families in their future, how they're going to contribute to the society. So all that is tracked and provided back to the companies and partners that we work with. Thank you. So I'd like to bring Neil back in at this stage. So Neil, Mia's mention of partnerships leads me perfectly to my next question, which is where do you see counterpoint research getting involved and, and helping? Yeah, as I said before, that onus is upon us as professionals to help accelerate in bridging the digital divide. So from counterpoint perspective, if you see, we have been in the industry counterpoint research for almost 10 years, it's our 10th year anniversary, and it's no better time to give back to the community. And since we breathe in and breathe out, talking about connectivity, measuring the markets from connectivity perspective across the value chain, I think we are in the, one of the really good as individuals to understand the crux of the problem and to help solve this problem. We are very excited at CounterPoint with almost 100 analysts globally spread across different geographies, majority of analysts coming from Asia and being in markets such as India, where we are seeing almost out of 1.3 billion population, still 700 million people are still not connected to internet or are very infrequently connected, don't have a smartphone even. So we see this is as an opportunity as analysts, as well as professionals in this industry to put feet on the ground, help in numerous ways, not only from volunteering in whatever time we can give back to the community in connecting numbers of communities, especially being in markets. Many of our analysts are in the markets where we require these kind of initiatives and help as much as we need. Uh, second is obviously uh, sponsor some themes and programs eventually partnering with connected, uh, unconnected.org and trying to get involved in other projects uh, beyond our home markets, giving an opportunity to our team, our colleagues to see the problems around the world, learn from it, and also give it back to the community. The third way where we aim to partner is obviously being in this industry and having a 360 degree review of the entire value chain, working with almost everyone in the value chain. We can spread this word in a much better way, being as a partner for unconnected.org and trying to bring in more stakeholders to this particular program and expand the partnerships. As everyone knows, we work and track so many different companies and work with them very closely. And we can influence them to partner on several programs and try to help connect the undersub communities and also volunteer in many of the projects. So that is another benefit which we see in with this partnership. And the next one is obviously from being in the industry 10 years, which I said, is uh, some sort of responsibility, social responsibility as a company we should have in donating our time, profits to the undersub communities. And that is something which we feel should now be a final part of our company as we grow bigger. And that is what I think is are the main key reasons. Apart from that, being an analyst, as, as Jan, you said, we love numbers. We would also try to build, a, or, or we are already working on building a framework to measure the unconnectivity. We all as analysts measure the connectivity. And uh, with your work at GSMA earlier, uh, Jan, you have been, involved in many such projects in measuring the connectivity index, how far the connectivity has penetrated. But we should also try to measure connectivity and which are the different players and companies which are getting involved and draw out some inspiration for other players, other stakeholders in the ecosystem to build some form of framework, track these initiatives and the brilliant work which ORG and other companies have been doing. Well, that sounds like a, a great exercise in helping companies understand not just their positioning in the space, but also 
the difference they're making. So bringing the conversation back to the unconnected, I guess an initial challenge is to help people understand the basic problem of being unconnected. But Mia, how else can people get involved with your organisation? First of all, working with the telecom industry, I feel like when I explain the problem in regards about being unconnected, there is a lot of companies that really understand the value of connecting these people. This is one of those markets where that is the understanding is, is very clear from the partners that we're working with. So we're looking to work with more partners. We want to grow our ecosystem of partners, whether you are you know, a, a charity, a CSR organization, or let's say you are an operator or a vendor or an OEM partner or anyone that thinks that they are or anyone that shares the same vision that we do, that connectivity should be a human right. So you could contact us, get on board. You can sponsor a project. We've got so many projects in the pipeline waiting for sponsorships. So I'm sure you'll find a project there that's really close to your heart. It might be in you know, a specific region where you want to support or around a specific subject like supporting connecting women or students, etc. So sponsor a project. You can even come on board and sponsor a whole theme. Another thing that organizations can do is to take on our hashtag Unconnect24 challenge. It's a digital detox, but it's also a way to raise awareness about the digital divide. So companies that takes on the challenge, they are urging their employees to literally turn off their internet for 24 hours. And by doing so, they understand what it's like to be unconnected. And they also see how, how much we're relying on the technology today. And I can tell you by experience to do Unconnect24, it's a lot harder than you think. So that's another way that, you know, include your workforces and your staff into this and, and make a difference. But we, we're happy to talk to any one organization that think that they can help us in this space with our projects and our goals. That's great. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. 24 hour detox is something, as I kind of mentioned at the beginning, a lot of people would probably <laughs> shudder at the thought of and how much you know, connectivity has become such a central part of part of our lives that we that we started taking to take for granted. So I feel like that would be a very interesting challenge to take. And um, I, I think we're yeah we I think also we'll put some links on our our site on the Counterpoint site to show social notes and so listeners can see how they can get involved in all the things that Mia's just outlined. So with this, is there anything else you'd like to emphasize, Mia? I know podcasts have their limitations, but anything that we may have missed or that you'd like to highlight here? Well, first of all, I'm really, really excited. And that goes to both you, Neil, and about the partnership that we're embarking on and work together on this. I think that's really exciting. And I think, you know, con well, one more thing that I might want to say uh, is that, you know, connectivity is a major part of the puzzle. But when we're looking at the connectivity status currently, you know, over 95% of the world is already connected to 3G and 4G. So that's not the biggest issue one of the things that we find running projects is the cost to run projects is high because of hardware pricing so maybe you get a few dollars for your old it equipment but i'm asking wouldn't that be better to use to give that you know to give that it equipment to someone to use for the first digital experience so again reach out if any one of the people listening in have any unused it equipment we would love to use that in our projects we will manage, you know, the whole process end to end and make sure that your used computer ends up in the hands of someone that really, really needs it. So, yeah, I think that was the one point that I missed. But Jan uh, and Neil, again, I'm really looking forward to working with you both. Same here. Very excited about the partnership and what we can do together and influence the industry to connect and connect it. Brilliant. Thank you both. And yeah, appropriate, at least for me, that we're ending on this note. You know, Mia, you just talked about the secondhand market. The refurbished market is an area you know we've covered for quite a quite a while now and is increasing in importance, both from a commercial perspective, but especially from a sustainability viewpoint. So perhaps something we could go into in a bit more detail in the next podcast, where also hopefully we can look in a bit more depth at the potential solutions to connecting the, the unconnected. So, so yeah, I'd like to say thank you to Mia and Neil for, for joining me today. And thank you to everyone else listening in. Please check out the Counterpoint Research website for our newly published blog on this topic as well. But until next time, bye-bye.